Welcome, everybody. Uh, uh, welcome, everybody who's currently on the live stream, as well as those that will watch later, as well as those that will listen only uh, later on the podcast, because I'll turn this into part of a podcast that should come out 7 p.m. Eastern Time uh, tomorrow, Sunday. And uh, if you care to listen again uh, while you're driving, perhaps. It's harder to watch video when you're driving. But welcome to everybody. Uh, today is my 12th. Uh, one, two, twelfth, um, uh, Q&A, live Q&A, and uh, <laughs> uh, Dana says, I have a beautiful wall. Do you mean the wall behind me? Because it costs far more. <laughs> it costs far more than um, uh, the actual home did. <laughs> uh, so the top, top row of photos behind me are graduate degrees. The center one is a doctorate. Uh, in aerospace engineering, the uh, next below that are master's degrees and or uh, bachelor's degrees, and the ones below that um, are associate's degrees. Because what the heck? It's not like it's hard. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, thank you, Dana. Um, but getting back to what I wanted to talk about today, uh, people have an interest in um, winning slot strategies. Uh, just to kind of introduce this to the people who don't know. Uh, there have been casino business practices since slot machines were started, um, uh, you know, uh, 1980, no, 1888, uh, but really took off with American Prohibition in 1920 because they went into the speakeasies and it just became the golden age of slots. I talked about that last week. But um, uh, when we started having mm, casinos, I don't want to call the speakeasies these casinos necessarily, but when we started having electromechanical devices from Bali's, uh, who the pinball maker, um, back in the 70s, uh, there began to be ways that you can cheat. I'm sure there was before, but there was ways that you can cheat right up until the modern era. Uh, uh, modern uh, till and it still exists in some places, but what you would what the casino would do is you know this isn't what I offer isn't about making you lucky. It's about looking at what casinos are doing and turning it on its head. You might call it advantage plays uh, is a term that does apply for slots. And uh, if you want to take advantage of what the casino is doing, and one of those casinos is take a slot machine that's seen from a, a great distance. Those of you who've been here for a while uh, know this. Um, uh, those that can be seen from a great distance uh, uh, can, um, in the casino or near a busy area, are often ones that the casino itself ch uh, chooses to make have higher odds of winning. Uh, so people will win there and be seen to win there, and people get a good feeling about being in the casino and run to another slot machine and lose their money. Um, so win-win uh, uh, for, for some people. But I say look for that one. And that's always been the case. Uh, they don't do it. Casinos don't do it all the time because it is on a budget, uh, but they would choose to turn those odds up uh, sometimes. And that's always been true since the 70s. Uh, when everything, but then they made things automated. Uh, there was a second... Uh, winning strategy that I hardly ever talk about um, because it no longer really exists except at the older style casinos. I put it in my book. If you pick a slot machine which has um, multipliers and or a second round, perhaps a spin, like on a Wheel of Fortune spin, you can win the spin. Uh, they uh, Slot manufacturers had a hard time controlling the odds uh, on the unusual aspects of that machine. You would win the appropriate um, number of times according to the settings, but they'd be multiplied. And when they're multiplied, you'd win more than you, uh, and the slot manufacturers just couldn't quite control slot machines well enough in the 70s and 80s in order to be able to make that more accurate. With the newer slot machines um, in the newer casinos, that became something that went away. There are plenty of older style casinos out there. You would think that they would all be modernized with a central computer, cables that allows daily performance metrics. You can reduce their for workforce that has to go out there and change the odds, you know, so often. And they're, uh, you know, that's a huge savings and a huge advantage both uh, for a casino to do that. Why wouldn't they do that when it came out eight years ago? When the technology started coming out eight years ago, why wouldn't they? The reason why they wouldn't do this is they can't. Missouri, Illinois, Indiana are mostly riverboat casinos. You can't put bundles of wires under the floor. That's a 
that's the hull of a boat. It's water down there. I should say a barge, technically a moored barge. And it might not be much water down there. It might be just a muddy basin. But nevertheless, there's no under the floor. Under the floor is water. So they can't upgrade, except uh, some of the gaming regulations. The gaming regulations are being improved. And for instance, Illinois, they're, uh, that's going to be something. Uh, honestly, that is going to be uh, uh, the Las Vegas of the Midwest is what they're looking at. This is just early indications. They're, they've made some changes in the gaming regulations. We should see them soon. But buildings take time to build, uh, and so MGM. No, Hard Rock is coming into Rockford, which is almost a suburb of Chicago. Six casinos are going to go into downtown Chicago. Uh, and then you've got all the riverboats no longer having to be riverboats and no, no longer limited to 1,200 slots at a facility. So, big boom. Uh, I'm going to check through the chat messages uh, So in a moment. Um, but uh, with the... And this is kind of what I talk about. This is what I talk about. This is the winning advantages. With these newer style games, I have some things that work in the older style uh, casinos, but more and more we're having modern casinos. And casino owners are uh, doing things, they, I call it tinkering. They're tinkering with the system. And that means that the morning has different odds from the afternoon, which has different odds from the evenings. And that be our job becomes which one is better, better odds. And we just start figuring this stuff out. There's others. And today I'll talk about two specific ones. Um, let me check through the chat to see if there's anything urgent for now. Um, ah, Larry, I'm glad it's not too late. Uh, 7 p.m., excellent. Uh, let's see. Denise, uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Excellent. Um, let's see. Robert. Hi, Robert. Good to see you. Uh, is it so simple that they simply turn the odds up on one machine at any time they want? Um, yes. Uh, it's on a budget, and they have a purpose. Uh, it's important to understand why, because that if you understand why they do it, then you can um, understand when they do it, or maybe even which machine. Like, for instance, if they have a big promotion where everybody's going to be there at the casino because they invited them, they're not doing it that day. Right? They've already got another method where they're getting people there. So you can not waste money on, on those days. Uh, uh, also, if they have turned the odds up, they're turned up. Okay, That means you should seriously consider taking somebody with you. I talk about this in my book. I talk about this in my book. Uh, you should seriously ta uh, consider taking somebody with you to the casino because you don't want to give up that machine. Once it's on... It's on. Stay. Don't go to lunch. Don't take a restroom break. Stay because you could lose it and you're winning. Also, uh, a little bit more complicated of a discussion is if you take your um, player's card out um, and it's a machine is idle, both of those things have to happen. Uh, the latest information, I, uh, the earliest information I had was if it's been idle for 15 minutes, um, the odds could be changed remotely. But uh, no slot technician is going to come along and open the door and change the odds like they do on older style casinos. But lately I've heard it's two minutes. So basically don't take your card out if you've got a winning machine. That means no rest breaks, you know, no, no uh, going for food. Uh, it's almost like one of those uh, poker tournaments, right? Um, 12 hours being awake, focused, <laughs> like that. Um, if you have questions about it, do let me know. Catherine, hello. Uh, Philly, T, welcome. Hello. Um, excellent. So, right. Uh, what I wanted to talk to you about today, and let me see if I can quickly check excellent feeds. Uh, okay, so I think I'm looking not too bad. Um, so I'm going to, uh, <laughs> those of you who've been a regular uh, uh, viewers uh, coming to the Q&A session, you'll know that sometimes I try technology and it doesn't work well. <laughs> but I will try it and I keep trying it. So I'm going to push a button here and I'm going to show you my other screen. So I should disappear and there's like a 15 second lag, um, maybe. Uh, there's definitely a 15 second lag, but I'm not sure if it's synced up with um, chat messages. Anyway, I don't mean to get all geeked out here. But uh, the screen that you should be seeing shortly will be of my other monitor. Uh, and I have two articles from my website showing. 
uh, two different windows are open. And uh, the first one is called Winning Strategy 4, and the second one is called Winning Strategy 5. The, um, the uh, Winning Strategy 4 is called re Winning Strategy 4 is called Special Events Winning Advantages. And Winning Strategy 5 is something similar, which is Reliable ho Holiday Patterns. Uh, and um, I've got seven, eight, depending on how you count them, I stopped numbering them after a while, of these winning slots advantages. And going back to what I said a few moments ago, or at least pointing to back to that, uh, uh, you know, this isn't something that's on you to uh, make happen. You are checking to see if the casino is doing this, and then you take advantage. So the casino may not do this, but the modern ones seem to be enjoying to tinker and we've been having some holidays lately, and we have more uh, coming up. Although you might say uh, that's the difference between a holiday. Uh, two weekends ago was Chinese New Year, and that's a holiday. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow is Super Bowl, which is a special event. So we'll talk about what that means as far as winning. Uh, but I wanted to kind of go over these uh, as a reference for you guys in case you um, uh, hadn't looked into the details of this. They're very relatable, but there are uh, important enough differences that I wanted to write two articles, uh, two separate articles on this. Um, also, by the way, uh, the image on your right, uh, the smaller window, that is what it, my web page will look like uh, on a smart device, on a phone, uh, on a uh, uh, iPad on a um, uh, what's the Android version the book or um, right, I forget the name of that um, I'm a mostly Apple person uh, but if you so there's right here is a little menu which is expands into all this other stuff which I think people miss that one button um, on the iPhone so if you go to professorslots.com on your iPhone, you'll see something like this. But if you press that menu button right there, this blue, the, this red area opens up. And some of these are actually categories. So under articles, if you were to click the little arrow on, over on the side, you would find categories of articles about casinos, about learning. Uh, this would be like history stuff. Reviews, where I go to casinos and, and um, you know figure out what's going on there and write it up. Uh, then there's all these strategies I was telling you about, and then I have I've been building more and more articles about tribal gaming. So, uh, if in case you have gone to my website on an iPad, iPhone, uh, Android device, uh, you may have missed this little menu button. In which case you're missing a lot. Um, also, if you uh, care to subscribe to my email list, I will give you a one-page PDF with my. Um, if we were to click this, uh, you would maybe I can do that that right you would come here uh, and any of these green buttons that have to let's say get my free report um, you would get my top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance including the one I've used as a top tier slot machine gambler you get that immediately uh, and then um, uh, you'd be able to connect me connect to me with emails and all that so far uh, over 2,100 people have chosen to uh, uh, take this report and no complaints so far, which is great. Uh, now, when we talk about special events, um, this is, uh, so I'm going to, I won't uh, feed you this, but on the, at, on the right side is what it looks like, on the right side is what it looks like on a computer. So all this sort of opens up. You've got something called a sidebar, with just, I put a few things there. Um, I'll just scroll down slightly so you can see some of this uh, links to book, um, some of my recommendations, YouTube channel, all the different places you can listen to my podcast. I have a podcast. Um, and so, but if you uh, were to um, uh, go over to the special events, um, and this is how it looks on an iPhone, you actually have to go all the way to the bottom, and all that stuff that's on the side on a computer is actually down at the bottom on a smart device. All right. Um, okay. So let's... Uh, that's what I wanted to show you there. Uh, let me put myself back on the screen if I can do that. Every time I get a little better. Hello again. Uh, right, so um, if I were to, you know, tomorrow is Super Bowl Sunday. And tomorrow is not a good time to go to the casino because uh, they know you're going to be there, right? It's a big event. They probably got stuff planned and 
uh, they're hundred percent on top of that. And you don't want to necessarily be at a casino when they're hundred percent on top of it. It's a great crowd. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but, uh, it's not necessarily good for slots. Um, the, uh, they, they expect a lot of people and they have a problem. They have a financial problem. They have a, uh, financial reporting problem. I mean, we have, uh, I hope we have, I, I have, I hope you have, um, uh, gaming records, right? Your record keeping for your gaming. Uh, some of this is going to, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about why you need some of that. It's not just for tax preparation. Of course, that's coming up. Um, start your gambling record keeping. I have a episode two, three ago um, on the live Q and A's. Um, start now for next year for your taxes next year because you can write down what happens at these special events. In that, um, it's not needed for tax preparation purposes, but it does help you keep a record of well. Next time, I won't go because it was that bad or next time I will go don't forget to go because it's so great you know you need to find out what your casino is doing and remember next year Uh, you know or you can just guess but um, uh, and maybe you even have your records from last year and you can uh, decide whether you go this year so there's special events there's all kinds of them there's the ones we all know of holidays there's the ones we um uh Maybe, may know, uh, Derby Day. I, it was a shock to me. There's this thing called Derby Day, all right? It's, it's during the um, uh, Kentucky Derby, and everybody, everybody just crowds over to the casino wearing these most awesome hats, having this terrible-tasting Jubilee drink, um, and, and the casino's just packed. I mean, that's, that's the one day there will be no parking spot left, all right? People parking on the side of the road, um, uh, and, but it's a fantastic experience, except you wouldn't really want to play slot machines then, but it's a fantastic experience. So, uh, watch out for that. It's a special event. Um, and what I'll talk about here is, um, what are they? Um, and why are they special? Uh, and when do they occur? So some of this, we, uh, I know the answer because some of these events are national, but some of these events are also local, right? Derby day. Uh, Chinese New Year, that kind of moves around a little bit uh, based on the moon. Um, so, uh, you know, you need to find out when some of these things are. Some years they're every day, every, every same, you know, same time. Um, but sometimes they move around. And what are the special events that take place at your casino? Because there's going to be somewhere, you know, it's the end of the month and they've been promoting all month having the drawing of the car on the 31st of whatever. You know, like yesterday was a Friday, the 31st, and maybe the whole month they were trying to build up the excitement to get people to come out for the big drawing that everybody's been trying to get entries into uh, for all of January. It could have been at one of your casinos, at, not at others. Uh, you have to find out what's being done locally, um, but uh, we can talk about other stuff. Uh, quickly checking the chat. Uh um, let's see, back to uh, Getcha, uh, Wolf UWU. Do you watch Game Shakers? Uh, oof. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, I like my glasses too. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm not sure what you mean by Game Shakers. Uh, some of the, there, there are some terms uh, people have been using. I have to research later to understand, understand what you mean. Um, uh, game Shakers, what might you mean by that? Um, I don't know. Is that a YouTube channel? Is that a technique? Uh, I, I, I don't understand that term. Um, let's see. Jingwalk. John, have you had success? If you want, um, gotcha. If you want to uh, make a comment on exactly what you mean by Game Shakers, um, just don't understand that term. Uh, right. So Jingwok, John, have you had success playing reduced lines on some machines that give that option? Um, actually, yes. Uh, one of, I, I was up at, um, what is it? Hard Rock, not Hard Rock. Um, Jack, Jack Cleveland. Uh, and I went into High Limit Room, uh, and I was looking around, um, and uh, just trying to assess things, see things how we were going. It was very busy. It was very nice. I got, I got a positive assessment. I never wrote it up because I was just trying to see what it was like there. Uh, actually, I was there with um, my internet lawyer uh, who uh, did great work and 
I paid him, and then he said, let's go have dinner at the casino, and you can show me around. <laughs> um, but we went into the high limit room, and there was a gentleman there saying, I love to play one bet on five credit maximum machines on high limit machines. So he doesn't have to pay taxes. He gets the full $1,000. I mean, there's a possibility he might go over $1,200 so it's taxable because the highest jackpot on a high limit machine might cross over that. But if he got the second highest, he wouldn't. He knows that because he's playing a machine where one bet doesn't win that much. And he's also paying less. Uh, this this was about three years ago. And, you know, if that isn't the most common thing in the world these days, uh, you know, what's a $6 bet on a penny machine, right? You know, you're, you're paying, uh, uh, you know, you're making a, a high limit bet on a penny machine. And it's what on a high limit machine would be one line, one credit. And so what you're talking about is pretty, pretty common. Um, example, a machine might be 30 lines max, and you could play 15 at a higher bet per line as a, as a value bet. Um, absolutely. Uh, I have whole discussions on that. Um, one of the things is uh, there's no pressure. There's no pressure on how much your bankroll is. There's no pressure on how much you want to make you know, the dollar value of your bet. If you've got 20 bet, if you've got 20 bucks, you can make it last hours by choosing the right number of credits in the right denomination to get you 100 or 120 bets, right? It's just math. Uh, if you have the bankroll to play a high limit machine, and I spent a lot of time playing high limit machines, um, you don't have to. I mean, it really does depend on your goals. So I got a couple articles on that topic. Um, wise Virgin, if you hit the service button for a casino employee to watch your game for 10 minutes or more, depending on business, I noticed that they will remove my card and insert his, uh, possibly flags the network percentage. Maybe. Um, that's not what... Uh, it, it, there's more than one way to lock the machine. Uh, you could could have the slot attendant stand there and wait for you to come back. Um, that's not very efficient. I have to wonder how many casinos actually do that. Um, uh, because w what I've seen um, at Horseshoe, when, so any Caesars entertainment property would be doing this, um, was they would uh, put their card in, they would punch a few numbers, and then uh, your card would get slid in, and your card would be taken out, and the machine is locked. And the only way to unlock it is two ways to unlock it. One is you put your player card back in. So there's no player card in it for 10 minutes. Then, or uh, I think they give you like 15 minutes. It might be 10, but I think it's 15 minutes. Uh, if you're not back by 15 minutes, then it automatically clears. It's just something that people don't use very often. Now, will it or will it not? Uh, change the uh, winning percentage because, you know, is it idle or is there a player's card in it? You know, there's no way to know without trying. And you have to try it a lot. And that's not terribly practical for me to take a lot of breaks and have a machine locked a lot. Um, might ruin my rep at a casino. So uh, it's hard to say. That's a good question. Um, well, uh, there's a lot of things that can cause the odds to change, like they change paper or they, you know, your card's out. You win a taxable jackpot and it's not your hand, you know, not your card in there. Sometimes it's coming back and forth. But the rule seems to be two minutes. So I'm not too concerned about, you know, paper changing and, and service because if you keep your card in um, right up until the slot mechanic some, comes along and you get back in, if there's no two minutes, then you're, you're going to be fine. But whether it's 15 minutes while it's locked, that's very difficult to say. I uh, have to actually check it. Um, do, 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 do. Why is Richard like to say never remove your card during winning sessions, even if you have to pee? Uh, well, you know, don't pee. <laughs> I'm not going to sit in your chair if you do that. <laughs> um, or get more, more cash. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can... One of the things that I advise in my uh, chapter on... Um, 
uh, thriving in the casino environment is there's lots of great reasons to take somebody with you, but somebody you trust. Uh, Catherine, uh, does it make a difference if you keep playing a winning machine with your card in, but cash out your uh, um, uh, ticket in, ticket out, and insert a new bill? I've never seen anything like that. Um, it really is, uh, you know, I, I, a related question would be, let's say I'm not using my player's card, but I've got money in the machine. Does it count when the money is in the machine? My card never is in the machine. I'm pretty sure it has to be idle. So I mean, I think that means that um, I think they interpret the casinos interpret that to mean uh, no money in the machine. Now, if it's twenty cents, I'm not sure. You know, these are all things that you need to test. But um, I suggest using your card unless you're doing historic horse racing machines in Kentucky, or you have pretty solid evidence that it's not um, that it's hurting you. Or the place, the rewards club doesn't have anything that you might want. But, you know, free food, most anybody would want. Um, anyway, uh, if you choose to play, use a player's card, then you're most safe from the player percentages uh, being changed with or without cash. If you put more cash, if you take the cash out, um, you just have to have one or the other in. Uh, Larry, when you say taxable jackpot in the UK, we don't have to pay tax on uh, gambling, gaming uh, profits. Uh, that is also true uh, in the United States in some states. So we have the federal, which is optional. Uh, we have uh, gambling taxes. Um, uh, it's optional at the time of the win. It, um, then there's state, which Nevada doesn't have any, uh, but others have different amounts, and some say, well, you have to live in the state, so there's all different kinds of rules. That's why I have 56 articles on every U.S. state, territory, uh, and our federal district, and I'm coming to you, UK, at some point to check out yours. I've already started digging into Canadian provinces and their gaming regulations, um, but I need to continue expanding. Uh, expanding. Uh, for instance, uh, the Philippines is the hotbed for slots right now uh, in the world. All these new casinos coming in and nobody knows anything uh, you know, in that society much about slot machines, so there's all big mysteries. But I need to expand my gaming regulations knowledge base outside of just the U.S., and I've been digging into California, and I'll uh, have not put an order on which gaming regulations I'll, I'll start on, but um, coming for you, UK. <laughs> um, uh, Jingwok, if I'm playing a at three cents and why I cash out the machine will sit for a time, uh, at three cents, then it will reset to one set. Oh, that's okay. Um, the, I think every, okay. I, I went looking through every gaming regulations that I could find all the States in the United States. Um, and I went looking through the regulations and I could not find this this rule somebody told me that was in the regulations about 15 minutes having to be idle before they can change the odds. But I started having problems with that almost immediately. 15 minutes? When is a slot machine on a busy night ever idle for 15 minutes? Two minutes, maybe, not 15 minutes. Um, and so I started having problems with this rumor. And uh, I got been having some conversations and and some insights from from people who say they have insights and and it's starting to make a little bit more sense which is a, it's a lot less time than that uh, if it's a lot less time then um uh, what time is it so i know that it uh, probably isn't more than 15 minutes um but i have fairly good understanding from the contacts that I've been making that it could easily be two minutes. So that not only tells me it could be two minutes, but it also tells me it's variable by casino. So if you have an idea that your casino, you may find out how many minutes it is at your casino. You know, it, it, this is, there's no gaming regulation forcing it to be a particular number. It's just casino by casino business practice. That's true for all my gaming strategies. What does your casino do? You can determine whether it's a new casino or an old casino, so you can start ruling out what's possible for them to implement. Um, but keep your eyes out. Uh, another thing I uh, will say, I uh, have said, is I'm not trying to feed you fish. I'm trying to teach you to fish. Okay? So uh, take it under advisement. Try to figure out what the time is on yours, or at least don't ignore it if it comes across 
crossed you. Uh, so was there any more to your question? Um, no. Larry, uh, when I was there last year, one of our group uh, won $67,000 within 15 minutes of us arriving. He spent the, uh, he had to spend about two hours filling out forms well worth it. Um, if you're talking, okay, so the reason why he spent two hours filling out forms is, I can guess, it was a progressive jackpot. Uh, I've won $27,000. Just push a button, there it is. Um, it took little more than the usual amount of time. Anything over $10,000 in the United States, um, it can't be the usual process. And I've written all this process down in articles on my website about what happens when you win a jackpot, both behind, you know, what does a slot attendant do? What does you do? What's the different responsibilities? What does the machine do? It locks up. You know. So I've documented all that. It's in the book or it's in articles in my website, all free. Uh, not the book, but the uh, book's pretty cheap. But... Uh, when you go over $10,000, the jackpot is it, one hit, one jackpot over $10,000. It can't be assigned by, it can't be um, processed by one slot attendant who then calls over another slot attendant to check the work, to check the paperwork. It, the second person has to be the floor manager, and, you know, people wearing the suits, uh, and they have to come over. And that gets heard. Um, I saw, you know, I had mine was processed at 4.30 in the morning uh, and uh, by a slot attendant and a floor manager. And then I went in my usual time in the other evening, not this person's shift, and there was another floor manager, and I said hello because I try to say hello to every, everybody who might give me insights. Uh, and he said, oh, I remember you. You know, I, I remember your paperwork when it came through. So there's a lot of scrutiny that goes on, um, but it doesn't take two hours it takes the usual amount of time, which can be as long as 20 minutes. Uh, because it's two hours, I would say, well, what else could it be? Maybe it was um, not a U.S. citizen? No. The only thing I can think of is it was progressive jackpot. Because when you have a network of progressive jackpots, they have to actually call the other casino that's involved if it's a networked uh, progressive jackpot. And then they all have to meet at whatever time in the evening it is. And I've heard eight hours. I've heard people having to wait eight hours, but that might have been like a million dollar progressive jackpot. So yeah, sixty-seven thousand dollars, wait two hours. It's not comfortable. Uh, it's, it's not le every square foot in a casino is making money if it has a slot machine on it. If it doesn't have a slot machine on it, what the heck? What the heck? Why wouldn't it have one? So when you go into the back areas of casinos, they're tiny. So that person, I suspect if they, you know, let him walk about, that's one thing. But if they took him into a room, it was probably a hard chair in a corner and a brick walled <laughs> sort of sort of room. Uh, it's a tough place to be for two hours. Um, okay. <laughs> now, 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 UK and Canada make nice. Uh, Canada says, uh, Catherine says that Canada has no uh, taxes either. Um, and then, but in the US, uh, you can get them back if you do good record keeping, uh, particularly if you spend it all later. Uh, and uh, that's something of the point. Um, uh, so it's all different, all different ways. Uh, this is the sort of thing that's going to slow me down a little bit uh, going to other countries is, uh, understand the tax law in other countries. Um, but yeah. Uh, right. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Yes. Ontario, Canada. Um, let's see. Um, uh, so wise version mentioned there's TITO the trigger in trigger out is called retrigger written to know their author's book. Right. Um, I talked to Eric Rosenthal. We had uh gamble Palooza at Foxwoods, uh, April, less than two years ago. Um, he knows somebody uh, in higher up. Uh, he has a contact higher up in the slot manufacturing world. Um, and he did, he was the only person at that table who actually understood some of the stuff that I was, I had figured out, but he knew it because a slot manufacturer executive told him, or he had asked and they had discussions about it. The, the machine is cleared in at least one sense of the word when you take, when you uh, get your cash out when you push the cash out button. Use a ticket and ticket out device to have a voucher. Uh, it's not really a voucher, a ticket. The machine is does have a clearing process. Uh, whether or not the player's card is removed, uh, it's not prominent 
Um, it's not a way to win. It's not a, I didn't write it up as a winning strategy because it kind of isn't. Um, uh, but if the casino has a winning strategy of offering a taste um, in the first few bets, that's one way to trigger that taste. But there's more than one way to, you know, more than one things you want to do. Because if you take any new person sitting down, um, uh, uh, activates, oh, you know, we want to give this person a taste. Uh, uh, we don't necessarily want to give somebody a taste when they spent all their money and they put another 20 in. Because, you know, what's the odds of that being the same player? We don't want to give the same player two tastes, that initial win to get them going and spend all the money they brought too, as well as that. Um, so, so yes, you can uh, take it out uh, and, and take it in. Um, I've done a lot of that. I never saw, um, I never saw much of a change. It never stood out as being a winning thing to do. There is something going on. It does help a little bit, but I never, I found better things to work on. And it has a problem, a pretty serious problem. You can use all the paper in the machine. There's a lot of paper, but you can do a lot of take it in and take it out. So you could lose, you know, use all the paper and then guess what? It needs to be serviced. And maybe they'll get to it, maybe they won't. And maybe it's a winning machine. So, you know, I told you before about having a winning machine, playing as long as possible. One of the things you have to do is not fill it with cash. Take all the paper. You know, it will run out if you do any of that, if you want a, you know, a grueling 12-hour session. Uh, so I reduce how much ticket I use. I reduce how much cash I put in. Um, if it's a winning machine, it just means I'm uh, uh, just working with my bankroll. Um, uh, but see, in many states, there's an upper limit on how much the machine will hold, uh, and it varies. In Ohio, it's three thousand dollars. In California, it's eight hundred dollars. Um, they just don't let it hold more. And so, if you got to three thousand dollars, you know, so let's say you put in two thousand five hundred dollars and you want a five hundred dollar jackpot on a high limit machine. I've done it. It goes up to 3000 Great. Now what if you win 10 bucks? Make a $10 bet and win 25 Well, what's the difference? 15 It'll spit out a ticket automatically with 15 So anytime you go over the $3,000, it will it'll, it'll put out the difference so the balance remains 3000 and you get a ticket in, ticket out for that, that difference. Now, of course, if in the United States, if it's over $1,200 on a single bet, uh, then that'll trigger a hand pay, uh, which which is the tax form. But in um, if you get over $800 in, is it Nevada? Uh, this is a, a call that I answered for, um, you can bet on that, a great podcast, wonderful podcast for the recreational gambler. Not terribly about sp uh, slots, but when they have occasional slots question, I'll, I'll call in and the next time they'll uh, show it. But one of the problems that can happen is, uh, um, not problems, the state by state, they can choose, okay, if you win $800, there's going to be a hand pay. It's just not taxable, not immediately so. The $1,200 or more is a requirement that uh, things be taxed right then. You get a tax form W2G. That's what happens. But if you win $800 in, I think it's California, might have been Nevada. I'm trying to remember where the caller called in from. Uh, then it causes a hand pay, and people are like, oh, look, a hand pay. Well, there's going to have to pay taxes on that. Not necessarily. Sometimes they, uh, if it's $1,200 or more, it is a taxable one. Anyway, I'm going on too much about that. Um, you're welcome, Catherine. Uh, Steve, are bonuses predetermined by random number generators when you win? Um, uh, the, an the technical answer um, is no, but you may not understand what I mean by that. Uh, when you push the button... Everything is determined. There's no second stage, okay? There's no, well, when I see this, then it calculates that. No, everything is done when you push the button on a class three slot machine because it's a game of chance. It is not a class two, which is where you have to actually make a choice. So everything is determined at the press of the button, even the bonuses. Any one of the bonuses, 
uh, you know, they're all determined um, uh, if you have a skill-based game, like video poker. So there is no recalculation after you get your first round and you choose your cards and it proceeds from there. Every possibility was calculated once at the push of the button, and they just use that database. All right. Uh, vice Rich, my Lisa won a progressive jackpot, the Willy Wonka golden ticket. Uh, it, uh, it took way longer to reset due to key under the machine, added more staff to reset the progressive. Yeah, but that's not waiting to be paid. Uh, I think, uh, Larry wasn't asking about, well, we had to wait two hours before we can continue to play on that machine. Um, Yeah. Okay, uh, that, 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 that's very insightful, um, uh, Wise Version. I, I appreciate that, Richard. I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, uh, I thought about buying slot machines, but everything I could possibly afford at the moment would be five, ten years old, and, and then I'd have slot machines. <laughs> it's okay. It's, I can privately own them in, in Ohio, and there's a great place called Gambler's Paradise, uh, maybe ten 15 miles away, uh, something like that, uh, where uh, I probably shouldn't say stuff like that, um, uh, where you can buy and they'll ship to anywhere in the country as long as the, it is legal to privately own a slot machine. And if, as the owner told me, and if you got a friend in the next state over where it is legal, we'll ship it to him for you. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> let's all stay honest here. Um, Larry, uh, two hours were because we were from you, really. All right. Um, I suppose they were trying to figure out what the taxes would be. No, I'm starting to push my button a little bit. Why aren't they prepared? Um, I'm so sorry, Larry. Uh, wise Virgin. Uh, activated taste during first few bets. Yeah. Uh, interesting to you address more in, into this something called the attract mode. Um, it's just terms. Um, attract mode, uh, sounds like a marketing term, honestly. Uh, and, uh, which is not a bad thing. Um, well, what's that? Well, give me money and I'll explain. <laughs> um, I just try to explain things. Uh, taste seems to be what people understand. Um, be interesting, you know, what other people call these things, but uh, it is actually very hard to have the, you know, um, the advantage players talk about anything. They're just so tight-lipped. Um, I've tried, even earlier today, I explained to myself, I try to explain to people when I talk to them, uh, you know, ways of expressing myself. And one of them is, do you remember that magician who had the black mask, who gave away the magician's secrets? They'd show you the trick and saw the girl in half, and then they'd turn the stage around, and it's all open, and they say, see, she's, you know, very flexible. She, you know, crawls through this hole and goes over there, and, you know, and, and he explains the trick. Um, and all the other magicians get mad at him for explaining the trip because, you know, nobody wants to watch a magician's trick if they know how it works. Uh, it's all magician stuff. Uh, and because that forces them to have to learn new tricks. And that can be arduous um, and equ- inexpensive. So I'm explaining. I'm a magician with a ma- black mask and I'm telling you how it works. Uh Wise Virgin in North Carolina. Well, Wise Virgin, get somebody else a chance. Um, uh, in North Carolina, the Harris slots will not hold more than two k. Okay, so two thousand dollars in North Carolina, uh, eight hundred I think in California, three thousand in Ohio. You just work within those limits. But what you know, whatever it is, I just didn't, didn't want you to be confused by it. All right, uh, more than two thousand cashed out voucher. We'll have to walk up to the cashier in person. Yeah, that's the other thing um, that, that's worth pointing out. Thank you, um, uh, Wise Virgin uh, Richard. Uh, if you have a voucher that's over a certain amount, let's say you put up, you know, you have $100 bills. You put $100 bills in uh, to the slot machine. Maybe you put $3,000 in and you do it, you know, and maybe it allows that and you, and you, um, you know, if you're in Ohio and you cash out and you got a voucher for $3,000, do you take it over to the little machine that will spit out that much money? No, you have to go to the cashier. Well, if you say so, Larry, uh, I worry about certain things, which no need to talk about here. 
Uh, Jingwalk, uh, should we be aware of the little light stack on top of the machine? It flashes red if service is requested, but does it blink while it's getting low on paper? Uh, Jingwalk, no, it, it does not. However, look again. Look at your candle again. Uh, it's called a candle, uh, uh, the light stack, because you, you said it yourself, light stack. There's more than one light, right? There's a red one and there's a white one. I recently found out what the white one means in Missouri. It means, in a casino, for them, that casino, it means the machine was just opened by a, slot, a slots mechanic and the odds were adjusted. The casino slot attendant told me. I said, what's, those, what's all those white lights? Well, a slot, attendant, a slot mechanic opened it up, adjusted the odds, closed the door. This is a place where they don't have a remote server because um, it, the floors are, you know, the hull of a of a moored boat, um, so they and I also checked to see if it had been renovated uh, since 2012. And talking to employees that have lived, worked there for eight years, no, it had not. Uh, these are all the investigative things I do when I review a casino, but uh, uh, the white light, not the reddish or yellowish light is an indication at that casino that the door of the slot machine had been opened and it goes out the first time somebody makes a bet on that machine. Now, how might you use this information? Was it the odds adjusted? Were they improved? Were they decreased? Why isn't anybody playing it? When was How often do they change these odds and how long was the light been... You know, is this a way to tell when a machine hasn't been played for a while? Because that's a technique. You know, so I, I think about I think about you know what that means. Take another look at your light stack and see if you can figure out or ask a slot attendant what are the what do the different colors mean if there's more than one color? Because you might be able to find some use out of that. Um, I just know the one in Missouri, and I just know the one uh, the one light here in Ohio. So there's more going on out there. But ask, get chatty with the slot attendants. Um, it's to your benefit. Um, be nice. Uh, Wise Virgin uh, was told by an insider, accountant, better to play a machine that was not played for 15 minutes or more. Uh, I see. Thank you for explaining that. Um, I would say that you want to look to see if that applies to your casino, right? Um, you know, if you were told that 10 years ago, then it won't apply. If it was told recently, it applies, it could, you know, you have to check everything, right? That's, uh, that's what I say, check everything. Um, it's, I just don't see how that's going to work, though, honestly. Um, if it's in a track mode, how's that even possible? Someone has to actually play it for it to show that it's a winner. Sitting idle, hmm. Well, I guess it might be another way of expressing my five pull method. If the casino does a taste, then the casino does a taste. Uh, and so the new player, if you can convince it is a new player uh, by using a player's card or using the ticket in, ticket out, then you can then you can uh, collect tastes. That's my five pull method. But um, uh, there is another. Th uh, uh, advantage play that doesn't necessarily go along with that and it can be just just this other one but when it's both when it's both a taste and this other one that's what you're looking for because that's bigger jackpots and i have seen where um uh, uh, the longer a machine is idle the more likely it'll have a bigger jackpot fast it, it's not a, it, it was at a casino that didn't have tastes it was at a casino where the slot machine being idle meant that you won. It's like the difference between my, my winning strategies that I was telling you about, uh, or I don't know if we'll, how far we'll get to that, um, about there being special events and there being holidays. Well, why didn't I just write one article about special events and holidays? Because there's enough of a difference that it matters. The details matter. Um, so, uh, yeah, that that is one that I, I just tell people, see if your casino does taste and if you can find casino, uh, find slot machines at that casino which haven't been played for a while, that's even better. And I just leave it at that. Okay. Um, right. So I wanted to cover at least a little bit of uh, special events. Um, a special event is anything your casino does. It can include holidays, but watch out for holidays because some holidays um, are not. Uh, uh, people don't show up. 
people aren't there on Christmas morning. Uh, so special events are special events where the, there are there are crowds, just crowds, uh, and it may also uh, be something that you as, isn't advertised very much, or at least not to you. It might be for the high limit. It might be might be for for everybody who is a player. But maybe you're visiting a casino and you don't know if it's a special event. So so special events are whatever the casino says it is. Whatever they do to cause a crowd to appear. All right. So now we di- define special events. Um, uh, and what's so special about them? There's a there's a difficulty for casinos. Nothing's perfect. Um, accounting takes time, and there's a lot going on at a casino. A lot of money flowing in, flowing out, flowing around, and and so they can't perfectly handle the money flow on a busy night. They're close, but they're not perfect. And not and close means they could be off by a hundred thousand dollars. And the gaming regulator, and if they're off the wrong way, this is my whole point. If they're off the wrong way, if they have given back too much, then they're going to have to make a hundred thousand dollars from anybody who comes in during the slow days that follow that busy Sunday event. And so on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, when they all together on those days, they might have half as much as actually came back on Sunday. They're going to have to take take that money in order to meet their requirements with their gaming regulations. That's just a nightmare. The, the locals get upset, those that come in during the week. Um, the gaming regulations, you know, regu- reg- regulators get upset because maybe the casino can do that, maybe they can't do that, reputation just all over the place. And there's a simple solution, a simple solution. Don't give back enough. Avoid giving back too much on a busy night. The casino avoids giving out jackpots as much as they need to. They just get close, but they don't go over. And then when they've had a couple of hours to process the receipts and people have started to leave because it's 2 o'clock in the morning and they start processing this stuff, right around 4 o'clock in the morning, they have to give back some cash. A couple of jackpots and they balance. Boom. Boom. And that's what you want to take advantage of. That's what special events, taking advantage of special events are. It's not the busy night. It's not the big promotion that they invited you to. It's right after the next morning and early. Okay. Uh, Believe it or not, a lot of people go into a casino before work and they're there at 5.30. You want to beat them. Uh, When? uh, You have to find out when they occur. Uh, let's see what else. Implementing it. Um, I just told you about that. Uh, this is um, a trend. Let's see, right? Uh, the time, the amount of time it takes for them to handle the the uh, processing of all the money and un- understanding electronically what's happening because it is all electronic. It used to be paper. So this technique didn't work at an older casino because of a lot of paper and that might take 10 days to seven days five days to process everything that happened at a big event so they've gotten better at pro- at processing but they're not yet real time and i want to acknowledge that that trend from paper to now only taking four hours or so maybe a little bit less that's going to shorten it might take 10 years it might take five you know once they get other technologies involved uh, then you might find that they can process it very quickly and they don't have to give back on the next morning. So there are slow changes in some of these winning techniques. Take advantage now while they still exist. Um, you know, as I get more popular and casinos find out about these winning strategies, I wonder what they're going to do about it. You know, there's the analogy of uh, card counting in that movie 21 where people started wearing disguises and this and that and the other things which you could do back then. Um, uh, not so much now. And, and so there's going to be a little back and forth. We got to, this is not a stable, not, it's not a static, unchanging business practice. Even the last couple of years, it's been amazing on, on the slow changes and we got to keep up. I tell people, another person I talked to today was, um, you know, when I graduated from high school, I never saw a computer. I saw a terminal where you plug in a phone in the back and you had to use a fax line to communicate with a computer in a big room. Uh, and, uh, you know, but I never actually saw a computer. And look at me now, you know, <laughs> I'm streaming to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. And I've got this, that, people, you know, website, podcast. Um, we learn. We keep track. So I'm going to take a look at some of the questions. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Um, okay, so Wise Version for Western North Carolina, which is basically North Carolina because that's where the casinos are. A non-special holiday. That would be interesting. If you if you want to share, everybody, um, what's a non-special holiday? What's a special event um, at your casino? They, it's kind of a local thing. Uh, that would be... Uh, they got pretty serious about Chinese New Year in California, but uh, people I was talking to there in one of the private pre- previous Q and A sessions, um, I I didn't hear much about it here, but I wasn't actually there that day. I was here. Um, let's see. Now it's special holiday, least busiest day for our isolated Western North Carolina casinos is Easter weekend. Dead and and, and least employees. Uh, sure. Um, uh, yeah, that, it's it's funny you, you should say uh, I was I was concerned when I first started winning a lot, and I have a very religious coworker, um, um, and I was like, well, you know, do you think my church and church going friends will be upset? And he said, gambling is a big part of religion. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's right. Not to mention, there's a lot of praying going on in casinos. <laughs> it's almost church-like in a way, <laughs> given the amount of praying. <laughs> was, uh, anyway, that was his comment, and it was just funny. Uh, right. Um, Jingwalk, an advantage play to play a machine that is malfunctioning. Oh, I wouldn't waste your time on that. Um, there's two kinds of mal... Uh, I should read the rest of this. Players club card not reading, screen display issues, sound bad, might discourage players, therefore not being played as much as other slots. Uh, if a machine has an error, you run the risk of winning something, and they come back and saying, the machine had an error, you don't get it. Uh, that's That sort of thing's in the news. Okay, it's bad for the casino not to honor it, but they still will, particularly if you win the top jackpot of the $1 million megabucks, and they come back and they say, well, it was malfunctioning. So you might win a small jackpot, but you and you have a risk of losing it because they won't honor it because it was malfunctioning. They check the chip on these things, and they're like the uh, 60... 2,000, uh, 67,000 earlier, um, you know, you check the machine uh, to make sure it wasn't a fault. Uh, and then the casino has a tough problem, which is what exactly do they do um, to, to um, uh, you know, try to honor it, have maintain their reputation. And some people, you know, some casinos have stood by their guns and got ripped by the media. Uh, and others have said, well, you know, it wasn't that part of the machine just because it had a paper out condition or the, you know, it, it, you're running a, a risk. And anything you win has to be small. Otherwise, as the amount goes up, the risk goes up too, to the point where, you know, you're kind of wasting your time and maybe your money because you're not going to get your money back. All right. Uh, to do Larry, I, on your point, I often watch soccer in the casino and went in Vegas because of the time difference. It's four thirty a.m. in Vegas time, and often fit. Uh, oh, I have an article for you, which is um, my. Uh, it's hard to bring these things up uh, really quickly. Uh, if you go to my website and you do the search button and look and put in Las Vegas, um, I've gotten some very good tips and did some analysis and my goodness it is so and i and I'll also explain why during the week which sounds like what you're talking about it is so much better odds particularly downtown and one of the tips that i got from the facebook group the nevada so the nevada, one of the uh, facebook groups that i have um uh he, he they just tried some of my tips and they had a great time and and uh, is that it's just terrible on the weekends because they're trying to get the people coming from california but during the week they're helping the locals or at least you know not turning the locals away and together they have tight weekends and loose weeks but the weekend starts like friday morning and and uh so if uh Go during the week. Also, they said the, the locals know which machines have the better odds. The locals go downtown, and the locals smoke. So go downtown during the week, in the morning. So you start figuring all this stuff out. And the slot machines, he said, that have full ashtrays. Isn't that something? I thought that was something. Um, <clears throat> right. Uh so next week I will uh, see if we can 
talk more about some of the strategies. Uh, I'll pick a topic and we'll proceed from there. Uh, I hope everybody enjoys the game tomorrow if you're uh, a game watcher. And um, I probably won't go to the casino on uh, uh, I had planned on going this Sunday, but I don't think I'll go for Super Bowl Sunday. I just stand around. There's no betting. I, I'm confident of that. Um, but I, and I'm not really available on Monday morning because I have physical therapy. So, yeah. um, in any case, uh, I, I want to wish all of you a great weekend, and I will talk to you later. Have fun. Be safe. Make good choices. Thanks. <laughs>